what we're going to do is we don't actually have time to go through the entire washing and drying process. So uh, what we're going to do is just show you a couple of things and sort of say, you know, it's going to be one of those magic tricks. So if you guys want to demonstrate how pathetic a parrot looks like when it's dumped in water. Wash the parrot. So basically you just dunk it in the water. So I'd like to introduce Wan Chi. She's an undergrad. And Wan Chi, what did you at? 80 or so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just dunk it in the water. Um, normally you use some soap. You use Dawn soap. Just wash off all of that. Uh, don't bother. Don't bother. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And just scrub off all of the lead, especially at the tail area where it sometimes gets kind of dirty. And just after you finish washing it, pull it out. Pull it out. Well, actually, why don't you just do it all? Just one do, it, do it all. Now? Yeah, we're only going to do one. Okay. <laughs> so here we use the salad spinner. That's so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just throw it in there. Put the lid on it. And just spin it. Just spin it. And you pull it out. It gets most of the water out. So you can see there's quite a bit of water in there. And then so it works really well. Um, most things. The only bad thing about it is if the bird's a white bird. Sometimes it turns the feathers kind of pink instead, so it doesn't work very well for white ones because the blood gets on it. And then, yeah, so after that, you just dry it up. Um, use a blow dryer. Here's the magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> and then turns out like this. <laughs> would, you, would you like to go to Peru with us? <laughs> <laughs> and that part was washed. All the, uh, by the way, the, the, the domestic birds, I find, have to be washed. You can argue that all birds look better if they're washed, but the domestic ones, I find, are, are a lot dirtier than wild birds. So it, it's a good idea to wash them. Now, uh, Jonas, do you want to add uh, any comments about uh, washing a bird that has been salted first? Sure. Well, um, first of all, um, a salted bird has to be soaked for a long time, especially if it's been salted for a long time. Um, the skin gets very you know, rigid, and um, it'll never look right if, when you stuff it with cotton and try to, you know, pull it around that cotton. It's got to be nice and pliable. Um, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, you know, never cut corners with drying the bird. Um, you might think that the bird, you know, might dry a little bit after you've pinned it. Um, it's not going to. It'll never look right if, um, if, you, uh, if you don't dry it completely. Um, these uh, blow dryers that have this cool button on them are pretty great because um, you know because you want to sort of work quickly, and so you maybe use a little heat at first to get the feathers nice and warm so they dry quickly. But um, as soon as you feel that heat get to the skin, you you you, you, you hit that cool button um, because you don't want to dry that skin out too much. If you start to <laughs> if you start to smell that smell like cooking chicken, <laughs> you definitely want to back off a little bit. Um, that's not good at all. Um, might make you feel a little hungry, but in the, in the long run, it's not good. And especially with um, galliform birds that have the, um, the after shafts, um, you really have to get the base of that feather dry because that fluffiness will just never come back if you leave it a little moist, especially with those after shafts. Okay, now the other thing we wanted, uh, we don't have time to demonstrate, and Kim, you're up next with the pickle. Yeah, you're back there if you want to. Uh, get ready. So um, what I've got here is two kinds of shakers. Uh, you can also get them so that they're electric. And we're not going to go through this entire process, but basically it's a lot like salting. You've got to get it down the throat. Uh, you've got to get it in around the base of the tail. But basically, uh, the um, let's assume that I filled it up. I like this one better. This one's got the fine cornmeal in it. And um, this shaker's a bit small for this, but it's amazing. You can do this in the Ziploc bag, and you know it's it's a testing skill. You know, you just do that to let the birds dry, and they do dry. And again, I what we're going to run out of time, so we're not going to actually show you a bird that's been dried that way. 
So Another great thing for drying is we have a little better in the hair dryer, uh, uh, Taxidermy Supply, they sell these big blue boxes. It's kind of like a vacuum cleaner that blows instead of stuff. It's got this heating element in it. And it's like really, really nice for, for blow drying and getting things fluffy. And for really big birds, we've actually modified a dryer, for a clothes dryer, and we put a pile of dust like this in there, throw this wet goose in there, turn the machine on, it's sitting there spinning. Now we make sure like if you have big talons or a big bill, you wrap that in cheesecloth so that it doesn't rip your skin. You roll some cheesecloth, throw it into your dryer, spins around, in five minutes your skin is completely dry and all you're ready to do is blow dry the, all the dust out of it and you're ready to go. That's my so we use for acres. We use they're pretty cheap. You can buy a pet dryer, but they don't have heat associated with them. So especially if you're blowing cornmeal or sawdust or whatever out of bigger birds, it produces a lot of force and really blows that stuff out of bigger birds. Huh. And they're really cheap. Huh? That's that's nice thing to know. Yeah, thirty bucks or something. Yeah, pet dryer. Huh? Yeah, for like dry big dog or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> and you might want to put a, a dog in Mark's uh, <laughs> <laughs> humble freshness. But.